What's up, Breakthrough Success listeners? Mark Cabrera, the podcast coach here, helping people launch, grow, and monetize their podcasts. And I don't know about you, but I like this thing called the Freedom Lifestyle. It sounds great. It is great. And we have an awesome guest who's going to talk about the five pillars of the Freedom Lifestyle and how we can live our version of freedom. So the guest who joins us today, he is an international speaker, coach, trainer, and disruptive entrepreneur whose mission is to save the world by helping people fight for lives of freedom and fulfillment. He is the author of The Five Pillars of the Freedom Lifestyle, and his speeches and training empower individuals to live their freedom lifestyle. He also hosts the popular Freedom Club podcast. Our guest for this episode of Breakthrough Success is none other than Kurt Mercadante. Kurt Welcome to the show. Mark, real pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me on. Kurt, I'm so happy to have you on Breakthrough Success. And I'm looking forward to jumping into this conversation because we all want freedom. Uh, There's different ways to define freedom, but they could be just like freedom of hours. You don't have a nine to five. You could do whatever you love, but we all have a definition. We all want it. So lots of good stuff to jump into. I'm wondering if you could share with us uh, how you were able to achieve your freedom lifestyle and some of the challenges you had to overcome on that journey. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I've wanted to own my own business since I was little, you know, um, and always looking for ways to make money. And at my first chance, I was in my late 20s. I was working for a large organization in Washington, D.C. And my wife really wasn't a Washington, D.C. person. Uh, she was pregnant with our first child and we decided to move back to Illinois, the Chicago area. And I said, you know what? I'm not going to look for a job. I'm just going to start my own company. People say, well, you've never been a president of anything. You've never even been a vice president of anything. You've never done this and that. I said, yeah, so what? I'm going to start my business. And I went out and I hustled and I got four clients, good paying clients right off the bat. Uh, did six figures in year one, kept growing year after year after year, four or five years into it, making great money, but I was absolutely miserable. Mm. I was just overwhelmed. I was frustrated. You know, I would, I worked from home and I still wouldn't see my wife and kids because I disappear in my home office for the entire day, come back, you know, for, come down for dinner, go disappear again. And I did something. Um, first, I, I discovered the Gallup Strengths Finder program and started working within my strength zone. I fired half my clients, raised my prices doubled my revenue the next year and I had financial freedom, but I didn't have fulfillment and I wasn't truly fulfilled. I, I, I didn't like the way I had built my business. I had built it in a way that wasn't going to scale. Um, and you know, I let my clients control me. I let them own me. Uh, my relationships weren't as good as they could be. My mental, my physical health was horrible. I was 40 pounds heavier than I am now. I was on prescription drugs. I was having anxiety attacks. My dad died in uh, 2012. Now he's he had an excellent career. He worked in the space program, designed all the switches on the Boeing 777, uh, designed fighter jets, did all this cool stuff. And at his wake, grown men are crying. Not a single person mentioned his career. It was all about what he did as a husband, as a father, as a volunteer in the community at church, all this stuff. And it was like a slap in my face. And I said, he, my hero, my dad set this example and here I was not living up to it. And so I, I decided then and there, to seek freedom and fulfillment. I didn't know what that meant. But around that time, because I had built uh, two successful companies by that point, I began um, coaching, side hustle coaching. And on the days I coached, I had that feeling that I was doing what I was put on this earth to do. I was helping others. I was helping them get there. I was helping them avoid the mistakes that I made, uh, not only from a productivity perspective, but fulfillment perspective. But I still didn't know what I wanted to do. It kept being clear that this is what I was meant to do, but I was still making great money with my agency. And so I had that fear, you know, this is what I really want to do, but the money's holding me back. It's kind of the golden handcuffs that I created for myself that kept going and going and going until it got to the point where I woke up one week. I was supposed to have the week off for vacation. My clients knew it, but didn't stop them from calling me late at night, asking me to hop on conference calls, send me these reports. And I woke up on that Tuesday morning. I remember it clear as day. And I went to my wife, I said, I'm done. At peak revenue, shut down uh, an agency that was producing seven figures for me. And I said, I'm going to do what I want to do. And so I launched my speaking, training, and coaching a company, Haven't Looked Back. And there are a few parts that I want to uh, approach. First off, fun fact if anyone uh, has ever heard the accordion music on Breakthrough Success, that's my grandpa who 
also worked at Boeing. So there is a connection oh, awesome. there. Cool. And um, it's interesting how you mentioned you were able to hustle. You got to your first six figures in your first year, which is very impressive. If you guys want to figure out how to get clients, because we're not going to get too much into that. There's LinkedIn, there's podcasting, there's YouTube. You can schedule a strategy call for me, see how we can help you get more clients with those different things. But one of the things that I want to touch on also is that uh, Kurt essentially created the golden handcuffs for himself. And uh, when you hear about golden handcuffs, you usually think this nine to five job or even later that's paying you a high six figure salary. That's what you think about when you think handcuffs. But sometimes if we're not careful, we could turn ourselves from entrepreneur to employee. Still feel like we're an entrepreneur, but we're an employee just catering to other people, not doing what we want to do. Uh, so can you talk a little bit about um, how you completed that transition? Because it's hard for people to leave what in your case was seven figures, like six figures is hard enough, but you left a seven figure thing and pursued this new path. So can you talk a little bit about that transition? Yeah. You know, it's like diving off the Titanic without a life preserver, right? And you got to sink or swim. And it's interesting when I first did that, it's, you know, you make that change and you, you come to believe that you are what you do for work. And I only had that agency and, you know, it was very easy for me when I had that agency and I had a, I had my own sales style. And, you know, back when I started it, there was no social media. It was pick up the phone, send an email, go sit down, have a one-on-one -on -one meeting. That's how I got it and referrals and things like that. In the middle of that agency, if you would ask me if I was good at sales, I'd say, no, 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 I'm not good at sales. Yet I was picking up $25,000 retainers with ease, million dollar ad buys with ease. And, you know, a lot of us have in our mind what sales is. Oh, it's cold calling. It's Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, co coffees for closers, that type of stuff. My sales style was I picked up the phone, I scheduled a meeting, I met someone out for drinks, had dinner with them, did a great job, got referrals. Very basics of sales. I was great at sales, but I didn't think that, right? And so when I uh, shut down my agency, I was like, oh, I don't know how to do sales. Like, what am I going to do? And it's funny, you, you, you kind of forget all the things that you did in the past. And I went and I hired a guru and I read the things. Oh, what, what you got to do is you got to run all these Facebook ads. And then you got to put everyone to a webinar and that's it. And I went, I spent 15 to $20,000 doing that and I got zero clients. Now I could sit here and say, well, the person running the ads and all this, it wasn't their fault. I own it because I didn't know what my vision was for what I wanted to do and what I wanted to, the purpose and the impact I wanted my company to have. My messaging wasn't there. My vision wasn't there. My purpose wasn't there. And so I went back to basics after that. I didn't keep spending money on that. I started doing a video a day, every day for 90 days, and I posted it everywhere. Just speaking to, uh, you know, what I wanted to, through that, I actually helped figure out my purpose, right? But I kept putting those videos out there. LinkedIn, it started to catch fire. About 60 days into it, it was growing. My audience was growing. And someone said to me, you know, Kurt, your, your videos are great, but you're not speaking to your purpose and the vision of your company. And so I sat down, I really figured out what that was. I began speaking to that vision. I got three clients in the first week and I haven't looked back. And um, I did six figures in that company in year one. I'm going to double that easily this year. And um, it, ha it has to go down. Listen, as entrepreneurs, I work with folks and, and you'll read about it in the book to help them find their life vision. For entrepreneurs who are listening to this, if you are an entrepreneur, your business has to be an extension of who you are. Because if your vision for your business sharply diverges for your vision for what you want to do with your life, you're going to hit a wall and realize, I'm spending all these waking hours working on a company that isn't leading me where I want to go with my life. And once you figure that out, you become on fire. You're bulletproof because you know that life's going to knock you on your butt right? No matter what happens when you have that vision, it's easier to get up, dust yourself off, follow that guiding star and keep marching forward. And I love that idea of creating a business that aligns with who you are so that you love the work you do. You have the freedom that you want. Like I interviewed someone for Break the Success a while ago who Thursday is her day to play golf. And sure. you may like golf, you may not like golf, but 
the point is she gets this Thursday off and it's a business that works with her lifestyle. She doesn't have to adjust her lifestyle to compensate for the business uh, for the golden handcuffs, as Kurt was mentioning a little earlier. Uh, one of the things I do want to ask, because part of freedom is being able to make enough money, but do what you love. And I'm wondering, like, did you mention like you made changes in your videos? Did the videos alone get you those three clients in one week or was it something else that happened? No, it was my videos. It was all inbound. Wow. Uh, in fact, in year one, six figures all was inbound from LinkedIn. Wow. Now I started pairing that with outbound started doing more corporate workshops as well, those types of things, picking up the phone, calling, doing sales calls. Um, and I think that's important because the inbound is great, but it can be, it can be up and down. You, you know, you, you can make yourself, uh, you know, when you're not talking about paying paid ads, right? If you're just relying on, you know, LinkedIn, Facebook, they change the algorithm at the whim and you don't want to be slaves to someone else and outsource your company to them. All the companies, you know, that built their companies on pages, on Facebook pages when you could get a lot of organic reach and then Facebook clamped down on that and they went out of business. And so um, adding that outbound to the inbound is so incredibly important. That's when, you, that's when you're on fire. That's a really great point. And it's also interesting how you got three clients within a week because I feel like for, like based on my experience, based on a lot of other people, like it's very hard to get a client in the spot like the way I get most of my clients is through podcasting and mm -hmm. it'll be an interview. I'll talk about, you know, how I help people with their podcasts, with their YouTube channels, getting a TEDx. I'll talk about that stuff. Uh, the, some of the guests like post conversation will say they're interested or some listeners will reach out to me. They're interested. And it usually takes a few months before those people become clients. So do you have an approach for like cutting down that time and maybe even getting an instant? Yes. Yeah. I mean, the, the quickest way, listen, I, I think inbound is extremely important, right? Um, putting out that consistent con, you know, I, there's three letters that I like to talk about when I talk about uh, branding, right? It's attention and getting that attention. You know, I have a style that some people hate and I'm fine with that because I believe in the basic marketing principle of attract and repel. If you're repelled by, you know, I do videos on LinkedIn, I do writing and I swear, you know, not as much as Gary Vee. Some people don't like that. That's fine. I call people out. I call trolls out. I don't show empathy to trolls because if you're going to come in my, in my yard and scream at me, I'm going to chase you off my yard. Some people don't like that. I'm fine with that. When people unsubscribe from my email list because I've asked them to buy something, I'm fine with that. I want the people who are going to be receptive to the help that I provide. So inbound is important. That's great. So there's attention, but you got to be consistent. And by being consistent, you build that trust. And over time, when you show yourself you're an expert, you know, like you, you have 20 plus books, right? And now I have my book and I give speeches and you show clients that you've worked with, you build authority. So it's ATA, attention, trust, and authority. Those three things combined are so important when you're talking about inbound, when you're talking about putting that content out there. In terms of shortening that lead time, yeah, because I got three clients in my first week and then I went another month without getting a client. And so, you know, you, you put yourself out there. Where we have cut down the lead time is, um, I have a sales team now. They pick up the phone and they call. They get the appointments. You know, are you interested in meeting with Kurt? Kurt helps individuals and teams become more engaged, more productive, and more profitable. Yeah, let's do a 10-minute call next week. 10-minute call, you find out, good fit, not good fit. Good fit, great. Let's do a call the next week, maybe close. You know, and, and but... At the same time, I'm still getting people from inbound. And as importantly, maybe not, maybe more important, when we reach out to people on the phone, what do they do? They go and check me out on LinkedIn. They go and check my website. And so all that content that I'm putting out there is pairing that inbound with the outbound because of course they're going to go and check on me. And if, if I'm trying to help them with branding, this has happened to me. I've had some marketing firms trying to help me, social media, and then I go and they're, they're like not on social media. You want to help me with Facebook and your Facebook page, you have no Facebook page or you know what right. I mean? And so, um, so it's extremely important because the first place people look is Google. And if they Google you and they don't find anything out about you, they're not going to have that trust and they're not going to see you as an authority. So it's that inbound and outbound. I think that mix is, is just so vital. 
Yeah. And also coming out with content related to what you do, like on LinkedIn, I have a ton of podcasts and YouTube related articles because it lines up with what I do. And I did a ton of videos on LinkedIn, stopped a little bit. I will be going back to it now. I've been meaning to do it for a while, but after uh, listening to what Kurt has said, I know video is powerful on LinkedIn, doing them daily. It's really easy to like YouTube. I think of YouTube because YouTube, you need a ton of editing to really rank on the algorithm because you want people to watch a ton of your videos. But I mean, with LinkedIn, it's just as easy as like doing this for like yeah. a minute or two minutes and then you have your video. It could just be raw. It doesn't have to be fully edited on LinkedIn. That's not as important there as it is on YouTube. So uh, I would definitely say that's a good habit. And in addition to that habit of daily videos, what would you say are some of the other habits that have helped you get to where you are? Yeah. So, um, you know, the five pillars really are there <laughs> and I work with a lot of entrepreneurs. You know, the first pillar is superpowers and it's uncovering your individual talents. I'm a Gallup certified strengths coach. Each and every one of us has 34 talents. Those are your naturally recurring patterns of thought, feeling, and behavior. You know, are you a strategic thinker? Are you an executor? Are you an influencer? Are you a relationship builder? You invest in those talents to turn them into strengths, but then you amplify those strengths every day. A lot of us like to work in our weaknesses zone. What are my weaknesses? I'm going to fix that. If you look at the most successful people, you look at Larry Bird, you know, NBA Hall of Fame basketball player. He, he was a self-proclaimed slow white guy who couldn't jump. He wasn't going to, no matter how hard he worked out, he wasn't going to jump as high as Michael Jordan or Dominique Wilkins. He wasn't going to be as fast as them. But you know what? He could shoot the heck out of the ball. He could pass the heck out of the ball. He focused on amplifying his strengths, turning them into superpowers, being the best Larry Bird he could be. Didn't try to be Michael Jordan. Didn't try to be Dominique Wilkins. It was good enough to be one of the best basketball players that ever been. So the first pillar of the freedom lifestyle is superpowers. The second pillar is vision. Having that clear life vision for yourself that pairs your purpose for living with the impact you want to make on the world. Number three, you talked about it. You know, you talked about uh, the, the person that you had on your podcast having Thursdays to go and play golf. A lot of people talk about work-life balance. When I think about that, I think about someone walking on a tightrope over a canyon trying not to fall off and die. That's not a way, that's not living, you know, or a lot of people say, well, it'll all balance out in, in, a, in six months once this project is over. And six months turns into years, turns into when I'm 65, I'll retire and it'll balance out, right? If you're even alive and healthy by 65. So the key isn't balance, it's alignment. Aligning your relationships, your family, or your relationships, yourself, and your work in a way that works for you. Like the, the woman you mentioned going and golfing on Thursday. You know, I love going to the beach. I, we homeschool our four children. So it's spending time with them, doing those types of things in alignment. The third is outcomes. I'm sorry, the fourth is outcomes. And that's reverse engineering that vision so that every year, every month, every week, every day, you know the three outcomes, just three that you need, you know, you need to achieve to win the day. It's not a to-do list of 20 things. It's three outcomes every single day. I hammer this into people. Real productivity isn't saying, oh, I got 20 things done today. That's just clogging the drain with inputs. You got to focus on those outcomes. And the fifth pillar is flow. It's not grinding, it's flow. Getting in that state of flow, it's the cumulative effect of the first four pillars where every day things come more naturally to you. Things come easy to you. You're not grinding away. You're flowing like a river. Listen, if you dam up a river or you throw boulders in a river, what happens? They become rapids. The water doesn't flow as easily. You take that away, you take away the boulders in your day, you unclog the drain, the water flows. That's the state you need to get in to be truly productive and successful. Kurt, thank you for sharing with us those pillars and all of your amazing insights throughout our time together. We will be linking to your book in the show notes of this Breakthrough Success episode, but uh, where's another good place we could go to just continue following your work? Yeah, if you go to uh, fivepillarsoffreedom.com, it's easier to spell than my name, which is Kurt Mercadante. The website's Kurt Mercadante, but if you go to fivepillarsoffreedom.com, it's a landing page for the book, but it's also all my other links to my content, everything, all my social media is there as well. Kurt, thank you so much for sharing those resources with us. We'll throw those in the show notes along with a link for people who want to schedule a strategy call. We see how they can leverage podcasts and YouTube, get a TEDx. We'll include that in there as well. But once again, Kurt, thank you so much for coming on the show. It was such a pleasure having you on Breakthrough Success. Mark, thanks so much for having me on. 
Kurt, thank you again for that really awesome episode. And I think you listening, whether you're at home, in the car, grocery shopping, whatever you're doing, I think if we pay attention to that freedom lifestyle and think about growing our successful businesses, but also having the lifestyle that we want, really being able to create that business that complements the lifestyle that we want. Because at the end of the day, the reason that people start businesses, yes, they want to have impact, but they also want to have an easier lifestyle because it is certainly a lot easier uh, from the lifestyle standpoint to have the business than a nine to five. The business may take more of your time, but it is something that you're more passionate about and you can work around your own schedule. So that's the idea of the freedom lifestyle. Coming on the next episode of Breakthrough Success, we have a ton of awesome marketing insights. So if you are someone who wants to go from employee to entrepreneur, that next episode is geared towards that and the marketing insights as well. So definitely a lot to look forward to. In the meantime, I'd be super appreciative if you could leave a quick review for the Breakthrough Success Podcast. It would certainly mean a lot to me and help the show grow. So signing off, dream big, achieve greatness, and unlock your potential today.